What's going on, everyone? I'm not even sure if anyone is going to come in today because it's Saturday. Um, but I am going to record this video live and answer a couple of surgical tech questions because I've been getting a lot of surgical tech questions lately. So I am going to answer a few of them today. I'm sweating, you guys. It's like super hot. So forgive me for sweating. All right, I'm going to pull up my, what's going on guys? I'm going to pull up my laptop to answer some of you guys' questions and comments because I did get a few from you guys for surgical tech, even though I was supposed to start posting more videos on another surgical tech channel. I don't know why this is like so close to me, but I guess we're going to go with it. Hold on. Let me fix my camera. Maybe that's better. I don't know. I don't like why it's so close to me, but what's going on, you guys? So like I said, I'm sweating in here, but I wanted to come do this video really quick to just answer these questions that I got on some surgical tech um, videos. So one of them is the most recent one that I can see here. And I... I do not want to butcher the name of the person, and so I'm going to try it. I think it's San Sanjavi. Mm. So this question was posted two days ago, and I guess he is from India, and he has a diploma in operation um, technology, and he wanted to know if he could get a job in the country. I don't really know about outside of the states, like if you get your education outside of the U.S., how that will work if you are trying to use those same credentials in the United States. But I did um, work with a couple of people a few times that were from other countries and they had to go back and get more training from America. So I would just look, you, it's going to really probably depend on where you are going either to work or where you're going to go um, if you're going to try to like convert your credits over from another country to the United States. I had I haven't had to do that so I don't really know how like what to tell you to do besides to reach out to a school and the school may be able to guide you like any, any school that offers surgical tech may be able to guide you a little bit better on what you need to transfer your credits and credentials from one country to another one but yeah that's something that i really don't have like an answer to so i'm going ahead and answer the next question i have is by i'm just gonna make sure y'all not asking no questions so um pop cap entertainment he says i think it's a he i'm sorry um hello how many months Will it take to get this course done and to be certified? So courses, surgical tech programs are based off of the school that you go to. So for the most part, it's about 12 months and they can go to 24 months. And you should be able to get the certification while you're in school or like when you're done with the school. And then it says to, to be certified as a, oh, a step processing tech. I did not go to school for sale processing tech, but I'm pretty sure it's about a year program. I'm going to just Google it really quick to see how long the sale processing tech program is. I'm not really sure. And I would consider maybe not just being a sale processing tech because you are going to be limited. But the school is, I'm sure, less um, months. It doesn't take the same amount of time for you to complete a stair processing program that it would for a surgical tech. So I just Googled it and one of the ones I just pulled up here um, is three months it's going to take for the stair processing tech program. And it's about $4,000 from this Google ad that I just pulled up. I'm not, like I said, very familiar with stair processing tech programs, but you can go be a surgical tech and still take they're processing jobs and you can take the certification as well if you want to be certified as a stair processor but it looked like you can do it between three to six months from what i'm searching on here and i think like i say it just depends on the program that you go that you choose 
So let me go back to YouTube and get some more questions. Okay, so Popcap Entertainment as another one, please, Kiafa, please, I need your advice because I'm trying to apply for an SPT program. How many months is the program and does it get the certificate? Like I said, I'm not a stair processing tech. I work as a stair processor, as a surgical tech, but according to Google, these um, the, the stair processing program is about three to six months. And it's even one, one is saying four to eight months. All right. So so let's see what else we got on here. That was the pop cap. And most of the programs should offer a certification at the end of it, like for you to actually sit down for the certification. If they don't offer it, then you need to go somewhere else because the certification for surgical tech is about $300. So it's probably close for stair processing. Um, I have another comment. It says the the one comment <laughs> is the name of the person. It says, can you make another video on how much you make how much the payment work when oh how the payments work when you're on call when you take a case what is the starting pay range in your state i feel like you don't talk about it so clearly i made a video i made videos about this long time ago you guys so i probably could make some more updated surgical set videos um but i wasn't gonna post them on here the whole plan was me to have a whole nother uh separate channel for this but because you guys are asking, I'm here for you, so I'm going to answer the questions. And to answer this question, surgical tax right now, the pay has increased. So I'm going to say that to you guys. So if you're out here looking to make about $2,000 and you have a year's worth of surgical tech, a surgical tech training in a hospital, you should be able to go um, get a career. Uh, I'm going to read that comment. But you should be able to go get a pretty good job traveling job right now if you want to go and be a surgical tech so let me go back to that what did it say is the career good and is this career good a good one in 2020 so for me personally i think you're this is one of the questions that you're going to have to ask yourself um how do you deal with being a newbie with a old <laughs> and a doctor being rude to you because they don't want you there. Okay, I'm going to come back to that one. So, is this a good career? Um, Courtney Stamps, I'm going to answer that one because that's good. Um, but need to see, to answer your question, it can be good. It just depends on what your goals are. And I would say if you do decide to go into surgical tech to get in the cheapest program, which is going to be a community college and have a five-year exit plan. So, Surgical tech to me is a good career because right now you can make $2,000 a week, but it just depends on what you got going on. Like if you don't have any other skills that can make more than that, then yeah, you should go be a surgical tech if you can afford to pay for it at the lowest cost. Like I would not go spend $30,000 to go to surgical tech school. And Now, the, the thing is going to school right now is beneficial because the interest rates are lower, so you won't have to pay as much in student loan rate, hopefully. Um, if you have to get a student loan, but I just don't see putting anything over $20,000 into surgical tech because you still have to pay that money back after you're done with school. So do I think $20,000 is good? Yeah, because right now, even if you went to school and paid $20,000, if you wanted to pay that off in the first year, you could, and you would still have about $30,000, if not more, to work with. But you still have to take in mind like you're working in a hospital we got a lot of you know health things going on right now and if you have a family with kids and stuff you got to kind of weigh your options so i do think surgical tech is a great career you guys i've been doing it for a long time this year i i've decided to not work as a surgical tech and i won't be working as one for most of next year um if everything goes how i want it to go but i'm always gonna have surgical tech in my pocket so that's one thing i want you guys to understand even if you don't go to school for sur even if you go to school for surgical tech and you don't work as a surgical tech, there are other jobs that you can do as a surgical tech. So like for me, I like to use I leverage my skills so I can write about surgical technology and create like a website or go out and do other stuff with that information. So yes, you can go to school for surgical tech. You can become an instrument, um, like you can sell instruments and all that stuff. It's just more than one way to be a surgical tech. But if you want to do it like the regular way, I would go to work 
at a hospital for a year, get that training, and then I will go traveling. Now, to answer Courtney Stamps' question, how would I deal with... Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Hold on. To answer Courtney's question, how do I deal with um, being a newbie and older techs and doctors being rude to you? First of all, <clears throat> if you don't stand up for yourself, they're going to keep being rude to you. So don't be timid. Now, what I will say is if you don't know the case, you can, you need to know your cases. You need to, if, if you can, go to whoever the scheduler is, get your information the night before, get your um, case and stuff prepared. You know, just do everything that you can do. But understand, it's just some miserable people in the world. And when you're young, like you come with this vibrant energy and all of that. And old people that's on, that only have surgical tech as their life, you, or surgery, you know, because it be some old miserable doctors out there, and it's definitely some old miserable surgical techs that ain't got nothing going for themselves. They don't, you know, they just miserable people in general. So don't let them, like, you know, affect you. But if they are getting to the point where you can't handle it, what I would do, and I would tell anybody to do this, start keeping tabs of what people doing. Get your um, get you a card and start writing down. I'm coming, you guys. Sorry, if, hey everybody, beautiful. A butterfly word. I'm coming to you guys. Just give me one second. I'm going to answer Courtney's question. Because I know what it's like to be in a room, even not being a newbie, and they don't want you in there. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to get it either. I'm going to be in there and get paid, or I'm going to get paid the same amount, and I'm not going to be, you know, you don't have to have, you don't have to tolerate people being rude to you and all of that stuff. Like, write it down on the day, like, if somebody was rude to me today, I would get out of that case or even in the case, I would write down what they did, what they said, what time they said, and, and what if you had to say something in return, what you said. Like, keep a note of it so, so you can go to someone else and let them know, like, hey, I'm being bullied. When you start talking bullying and stuff like that to people, they start perking up. So start using those type of words. Say, I'm being bullied. I don't, like, report them. And it could sound like you tattling. But no, because if you don't go and put it on paper, they're going to treat you like that. And they're going to go treat somebody else like that when they come behind you. And it's not fair. Like, honestly, people need to have a mindset class when they go into the OR because it does affect the energy in the room when you got people in there being nasty and rude to you for absolutely no reason. So I would say start keeping track of what they said to you. You don't. Sorry, guys. I think it cut out. But yeah, I think I'm back now. So sorry if that did cut y'all back now. But yeah, so don't let people bully you because it's unfair and you should report them. Go If you don't want to go to human resources, go, um, go tell your... Um, um, your nurse manager and whoever's in charge of you like in the OR and let them know tell you tell the charge for that day like okay they bullying me don't put me in his room anymore don't put me with her because it's affecting your energy that's not fair you don't have to tolerate that so don't let people bully you because they will bully you and then if you start talking to them about being a bully and how it's ineffective in the OR as a team then they'll understand like you mean business and you can take it you don't even have to go to human resources you can skip and I would tell people be careful with human resources too because human resources is there to protect the hospital and the hospital staff like the doctors and stuff like that so they want you to believe that they're there for your benefit and they are to a certain extent like they don't want you in harm's way but at the same time like if that doctor bringing in a whole bunch of money to the hospital you know like it's one of them situations so if it's real bad you can go out and get you know an attorney if you need to i would just start documenting it because most people aren't expecting you to come to them with a list of things that has happened to you and bullying shouldn't be allowed by doctors or older taste and people just miserable so i just went off on a tangent with that let me go back up so i hope that helped courtney uh what if you went to school what if you went to school and got your diploma how do you get the experience and that's from butterfly word so butterfly word if you're still on here thank you for coming what i would do if you're looking for a job i would start going i would send my resume to all of the hospitals in the area what i would actually do was call the or and I would pretend that I'm like got a meeting or somebody with the nurse manager. I would get the nurse manager phone number or their email address. You really just want the email address because you want to send the nurse manager directly your resume. Put the rep, go find rep, go find the surgical tech job description. Create your resume based around the surgical tech job description. Go to the area that you want to work in to whatever hospitals. Call them. Find out who the nurse manager is. 
and email them. And then when you can email them, you can just be like, hey, you know, even if you did fill the application out, because they're going to tell you to fill it out online, like through the um, website or whatever, fill it out online, send them your resume as well, and follow up with them and let them know that you're really interested in the position. That's what I would do. Now, I will also apply for jobs that say they want more than one year, you know, serve, uh, more, more than one year of experience. I would just apply to everybody and let them tell me no. So that's what I would do. Let me make sure I answer that. Um, how do you get the experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, also, you can reach out to physicians in the area and um, surgery centers in the area and email the directors, email whoever email you can get, like, get their email and just call them because most like the people who answer the phone you can be like hey yeah i met with the nurse manager in the or and i wanted to send her over email can i either get the email address or can i get her phone number his or her phone number if they only give you the phone number then call and leave a message and say hey my name is kiafa well you know whatever your name is and i'm following up with you on a um surgical tech position now let me tell you Everybody needs surgical tests right now. Uh oh, I didn't mean to close that. Surgical tests have always been like a, um, a high turnover type of job. So it shouldn't be unless you're just having like, what's the word, um, interviewing problems, then you should really not have a problem with getting a job. You might have to leave the area you want to be in and go outside, you know, of your comfort zone of working to find a job. But there are several surgical tech jobs out here that, and right now, a lot of people aren't um, working in the hot. Like, it's, it seems like it's a shortage because I've been getting so many emails with listings, like, so long of people that need, that need help, like, in the OR and stuff like that, of recruiter, from recruiters. So I would definitely... Um, I would I would reach out to the surgery centers, any plastic surgeons in the, in the area, email them, like email them, send them your resume, take them the resume if you want to. Um, networking with other surgical techs is definitely a way to get a job, like networking with surgical techs, networking with, um, I done got a job from a radiology tech, like he was a lithotripsy tech and he was, he knew that I worked at multiple surgery centers, so he told another surgery center about me. Um, SPD test done hooked me up. Like networking is really a thing. You can also um, go on like the groups on Facebook and just see what's going on out there. If they tell you they want experience, okay, they want experience, but that wouldn't let that stop me from applying. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome, Butterfly Word. So, um, John Bella, I think I said, I'm like, y'all, I'm so sorry. I'm like the worst with names. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I skipped one. Dave, Davina, how do you get a job as a surgical tech? I'm in the Bay Area. You in the Bay Area? I love the Bay Area. And besides the bums, you can keep the bums. Hold on, I'm trying to get back to that. Okay, let me see what you said. I'm in the Bay Area, and all the job postings require experience in the OR already. So thank you. Yeah, just apply anyway. Like. I mean, you can lie to them. <laughs> I don't want to tell y'all to lie to people, but like on some realness, you if you done been to um, externship recently or whatever, you may still know a little bit more than you want to. And I know they're going to be like, you know, you don't have it on your, um, like you don't have a, you don't have any recent experience on your resume. But what you could do at your externship is add somebody for a letter of recommendation or something like that to help you get in the door and then just really reach out to a whole bunch of like recruiters. Just reach out to people. Is somebody gonna hire you? Like people need surgical tests. People and somebody did ask me about the pay. I'm sorry I didn't answer about the pay, but the pay or was that on this one? I can't remember. I'm gonna get back to that question on there. But just the experience thing, like don't um just keep applying, even if you think you're not gonna get it, even if it's say experience required, apply anyway. And when you get into the interview you know, just tell them you feel comfortable enough to do the job. Like, go in there with confidence. Don't be timid, because, like, the OR is, you don't be timid in there. Like, even if you are scared or nervous or whatever, like, you just don't have to be, like, you know, not scared, or just not, it's not scary, because it's correct, it's, what is it, courage that you use, even when you are afraid, you just keep going. I'm coming back, y'all. Okay, so I do love the Bay Area. You should be able to find a job in the Bay Area. If not, um, I could probably hook you up with somebody at Martinez. I, I do know a um 
Where is that link? At? I mean, where was that question at? She said she was in the Bay. Um, in the Bay. Yeah. So you know, you're welcome. But yeah, the, um, go if you want to travel to Martinez, you could. Um, I think what is it? Um. God, I, got, I forgot the name of the hospital, but it's in Martinez, and the nurse manager is super cool. That was the last place I traveled to, and I'm pretty sure they are hiring most of the time, at least if it's just PRN. All right, so let me go. Do, 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 do. Experience. Okay, hello. When you say go to the cheapest program, most of those are certificate programs is there a major pay difference okay so most people don't even know if you have a degree it don't matter about the degree versus certification i'll let unless you're going to continue your education outside of being a surgical tech and i would say you know if you could leave your options open but unless you know you want to go to school for something else then just go to school for that if you just want to be a surgical tech then i will go get the cheapest program and worry about the surgical tech i mean and worry about the associates or worry about the um if you want to get a degree i'll worry about that later if you're just going to school to be a surgical tech i will go find the cheapest program and go through that program you guys i'm not lying i wouldn't be out here paying a whole bunch of money um to go to these schools and two you have to think like I'm thinking of it as a return on my investment. So as a surgical tech, if you're going to get a 40000 we'll just say a $30,000 school, you know, like, even though you can defer your payments for a little while, the longer you defer your school student loans, you're going to have interest. So to me, I don't want no interest. So in my head, how can you pay it off the fastest if you're going to have to pay for it with a loan? So don't go out to a private school. I mean... I know some people say the private schools have waiting lists and all that, you guys, depending on how bad you want it, you might have to move to a different state or go to school in a different state to get the cheaper price, if you can. I know that's extreme, but I'm just a more more about cutting down on the student loan debt so you can actually enjoy the money that you're making and not have to pay it back. Because what will happen is if you stay in, if you get a whole bunch of student loan debt, you have to stay being a surgical tech until you pay it off or you pretty much just wasted time and money by going to school to be a surgical tech. I'm sorry, I'm going so slow, you guys. Um, let me see. Thank you. Can you become a scrub tech first, then go become an anesthesi anesthesiologist? You want Ariel Thofield? Tho you want to be a anesthesi if you want to be an anesthesiologist i would just say go be an anesthesiologist i wouldn't even worry about if you know your ultimate goal is another career and you just want to do something just to do it do something else that's not going to require you to go to you know go get a student loan or that's going to require a lot of money because to be an anesthesiologist you finna be in school almost what nine to ten years that student loan debt alone is like you know something serious so be careful with um be careful with trying to go to go to school for a scrub tech and surgical or scrub tech and anesthesiologist just go be an anesthesiologist or a crna and i would say probably a crna because then the ultimate um like you you're not all the way live like you're working under somebody so i think that's a little more like safe but but the schooling is still about five, six years. Like if you're going to go be a, um, a CRNA. So let me see here, guys. Um, so yes, to answer the question, Aria, you can be a scrub tech first. Davina, yes, ha, 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 Bay Area. Have, I love the Bay I just hadn't been to the Bay Area before. And I was just so like taken back. I, it was so beautiful. I drove drove there. And so when I came in, I came in through like all these beautiful like green and purple color mountains. It was just gorgeous, you guys. Like I just hadn't been there before, not to experience like that. Um, Lashad, is it Lashada? Oh man, I'm terrible. Lashada Grant, I'm at Jets. What's up, Duval County in the building? Um, let me see. Hold on, go back. It says I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. What schools do you recommend? FSCJ. <laughs> That's what, or St. John's Community College. That's the one I, I recommend. Stay away from these doggone community, I mean, these private colleges. These private colleges gonna have y'all working. 
I can say it because I, I mean, I've been to a private college before, not for surgical tech. I went to private college for uh, cosmetology, and it's the same situation. They pay, they you have to stay in the field longer to pay off the debt, or you stuck with the debt. I know people right now that's got student loan debt from surgical tech that they, they do not scrub, don't know how to scrub. Like you know, they don't went and got this. You know, thirty thousand. It's thirty thousand now. It's gonna be thirty five in a minute, and you know, and you don't even use it. Okay, so Ariel says, but I want to become an OBGYN tech first. I'm going to get my associate's degree, but I want to become an anesthesiologist someday. I'll be 25 when I start off as a scrub tech. I mean, if you want to be an anesthesiologist and you're 25, you need to start now. Like, don't even go to surgical. Don't, like, unless you're going to be an OBGYN tech. Honestly, being an OBGYN tech is cool. But being an anesthesiologist is going to take you a lot of time and energy. And you really like, I would just do that now. Like, don't worry, because you're going to get sidetracked if you end up being a surgical tech and then you want to be an anesthesiologist. I would just say, go do what your first go, like whatever you want to do right now. I would just go do that right now. Because anesthesiology is expensive too. I would almost, like I said, I would almost tell you, not to tell you what to do, but I would suggest being a CRNA at 25 because you can go to nursing school and be done in nursing school in two, well, four years, three years because you'll need your bachelor's degree to go into a CRNA program. And then you need to go through the program, which I think is another three or four years. So, but you can do whatever you want to. I just will be careful on creating a lot of student loan debt. I really would be careful with that. So, um, let me see. Um, Jamila, that's why I watch your videos because you keep it <laughs> Thank you for asking my question. You're welcome, babe. Davina, thank you for the advice. I honestly loved, love the hookup I'm working as. I was the EMT in the Navy. It was cool. It was stressful. I'm planning to go to surgical tech school someday, sometime next year. So, yeah, I would say, um... I mean, if you're working as an EMT, wait a minute, let me make sure I ain't getting y'all confused. Hold on. Okay, no, that was area. Yeah, no, I would definitely, um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to see who hired that I know for sure that I could like, you know, but you would have to go to Martinez for sure because that's where I was at. Uh, what is the most you made in a year as a surgical tech? Um, that's from, I think, J.I. What's up, Sh Sharon? Dennis, hey, girl. Or yeah, I thought I think that's the girl name. Okay, so the most that I made in a year. I mean, okay, let me be honest. So the most that I made, it depends on if I was working as a full time surgical tech or a traveling surgical tech. Those are two totally different pays. So as a full time surgical surgical tech, as a staffer, I mo probably forty thousand. You know, like if I because I was working PRN. I can make forty thousand PRN working at surgery centers on my own time, so that's the thing. And if I wanted to take call, I could. So you could take call if you want to. I don't do. Um, I said staff, but I really meant more like PRN staff because I never really wanted to work um, full time because I'm a single mom, so I didn't want to be stuck on the call schedule. And if you go to these hospitals, they're gonna put you on a, a, a call schedule. It don't matter how many kids you got or whatever. So you can make forty thousand. Working about 80 hours a week, PRN, excuse me, that's as needed as a surgical tech. Now, I, I, I made more than that, working less than that as a traveler. So as a traveler, working six months out of the year, I've made about $65,000, $70,000 traveling. So, you know, if you want to work the whole year, you can. But I ain't cut out like that, dog. Let me see. Okay, Gabriella, you could always go to the military for whatever trade in the medical field. For, wait a minute. You could always go to the military for whatever trade in the medical field and go to school for your bachelor's while you're in. So I was in the Navy. That's how I was trained as a surgical tech. And I'm going to just be honest. Like, don't go to the military just for a trade. Just go pay for it because the, the payoff ain't the same. Like, I do condone, like, if you ain't got nothing going on and you 17, 18 years old and you want to get out, you know, you want to go to the military, then, yeah, go do that. If you're 20-some years old, don't worry about the military. Just go get the trade because it's just more to it. Especially if you're a woman and you want to have kids and all that, don't, don't, don't do the military part with the kids because you're going to be 
if you go to like the Navy and go do surgical tech, to, cause I was in the Navy, so I don't know how the other um, branches work, but in the Navy, I had to go to boot camp, then I had to go to Corman school, and then I had to go to surgical tech school. And all of those required me to like, if I would have had kids, they would require me to leave my kids. If I would have wanted to have kids, I would have still had to like find somebody to watch the kids while I went to school. And then becoming a medic or a hospital corpsman put me more at risk for travel, uh, not travel, but um, deployment. And when I became a surgical tech, it put me even more at risk becoming um, deployed because of the skill set that you have. And then I was an EMT. So like, if you're doing any type of medical in any type of military, like, don't, cause unless you're trying to get deployed. So there's what I have to say about. Me. But the military is like cool, like if you if that's something you want to do. I see CBR, yeah, they getting it out there. I don't do CBR, but they definitely getting it. And the truth is, you can't get in the in the um in cardiovascular unless you got it. Now that's one department. Unless they like harder, you not just finna hop in. Like that ain't. But they do make a lot of money, so and they always on call. So if you ain't got no kids and no husband, no wife, you might be able to get away with that. If you have a family, some of this stuff you gonna have to play with. Like CBOR for me, I ain't working like that, you guys. Like I really was probably when I was traveling. Yes, I worked forty hours a week. Also, let me tell y'all this about traveling. As a traveling surgical tech, once you get your skill set up, and I don't even mean like five years in. I mean like. A good two years in one year of regular hospital stuff another year of traveling but when you're traveling you get to go do strikes and i know most of y'all know about these strikes you getting paid for these strikes so you just gotta know what to do okay hold on y'all getting ahead of me wait a minute okay so have you gotten your ged oh wait a minute that's for area area davina said have you gotten your ged i think if not then Oh, you definitely have to have a GED or a high school diploma. I found a lot. Of, oh, sorry, guys. I found a lot of community college are super helpful with those classes. I don't have a GED. I have a high school diploma. Yeah. Okay. My GPA. The GPA don't matter. The GPA won't matter. Your GPA is not going to matter. Your If you got a, certificate, a certificate or a diploma or an associate's degree, that don't matter either. What does matter if you're certified or not, now that will matter. But how you got your, like, if you got a associates and all that, they don't know about, they don't really care about that. They say, I plan to start a surgical tech program next year. Thank you for all the information on the career. You're welcome. Yeah, I was a Air Force EMT single and young. Yup, see? I, that, yeah, that EMT life, man. Man, I remember, I, I'm this side track, but I'll never forget. I had this man, he was, like, rolling out the rig. I don't know if y'all ever, like, um been in the ambulance before but the bottom of the rig has like this little hook and it catch and i pushed the gurney up but it didn't catch the hook so when i went to collapse the wheels they don't do this now they won't collapse um unless it's caught but the wheels collapse and that man would come rolling back out on me y'all like uh that emt ain't it not for me right now with you being a single mom as i am how did you do the traveling how did the traveling tech flow with having kids? So I having a child, having children. So I only have one child, um, and his dad is a, like our co-parent. Honestly, it's it's one of them situations. So he's with me. Um, me and his dad does have like an understanding that I pretty much have him as much, you know, because we homeschool as well. So that's something that I had to start doing is like being open to different things and stuff that because back then people went homeschooling like now everybody homeschooling or whatever because of this situation that we're in but i had to start homeschooling my son and then i had to get his dad on board with homeschooling him and luckily my son at this point when we started homeschooling him he was 10 so he was kind of like a big kid and he was already familiar with the um laptop and stuff like that so it made it kind of easy i guess to just send him to my to his dad's house while i went on my contract. Now, what I did do was I was only supposed to be gone for three months, but I was gone longer than that. But me and his dad ended up working, working it out. Like, I was just like, you know, because he do, I'm putting y'all all in my business, but his dad pays child support. And I was just like, you can keep the child support while I'm working. That was just something. And he was there for a long period of time. So me and his dad just came to like an agreement. If you got uh, family members, then just like, if you can work it out with your family members to help you with the kids. If you got bigger kids, you can take them with you. 
take them with you. I would almost say get an RV or something that you could like post them up in while you're gone. If they're bigger, like I ain't talking about no babies. If they babies, then just take them with you and take them to a daycare or you're going to have to take them to somebody that's going to watch them. I, if I had to do it and my son was younger, I would like leave and I didn't have like his dad available. I would leave him with my mom and just give my mom like some child support money because you're going to be making enough to like pay somebody to help you with, with your kids. So yeah, but being a single parent is like, honey, Yes, honey, them strikes is everything. Area, okay, actually, math course requires a pen on your major. I mean, did, yeah, the major, she need, a, if you gonna major in some, okay, let me say this too. So I say go to community colleges. If you go to a community college, you will have an so it's well, no, the one here I think is a certificate diploma. And then, cause they do have different programs. You can get the um, certificate diploma and or the associate's degree if you go to a community college, but the community colleges will be cheaper. Let me see. Also, community colleges are the cheapest and the best option. I am, oh, I don't know what that means because you'll increase your chances of going to a good college. Yeah, prerequisites to be done. And also, you guys, if you don't know, you can do your prereqs. If you don't, let's just say I'm just give you, and it's depending on how you know about like how hungry you really are to be a surgical tech. You can go on to study.com and you can do a club course. It's two hundred dollars per month, but you can take two college credits. So what you could do is go to whatever community college website in your area, find out what prerequisites they have, and go to um study.com or you could Google clepping courses club college courses but clepping a course meaning is that you can test out of it but study.com excuse me guys study.com has um like a syllabus and you know a course material included so i include it into the price with the um club exam so if you had to wait to get into a program while you're waiting don't just wait. Go clip out of a course or two because that's going to not only cut your time down, it's going to cut your money down. Because if, even if you went online right now to any community college, every credit that they have on there is over $200. Every, yeah, every credit that you can get is over $200. So if the credits are over $200 at a community college, if you clip out of one or two of them, you save, you know, a certain amount of money and time. So study.com, study.com, study.com study.com you guys because it's real i've taken clip courses over there um i've taken refresher um a p courses because i had to take i had to get my um my a p was old so if i wanted to go get like a higher diploma or a higher degree or whatever then i would have to go and take another a p course and i had to get to kind of like just get some more information on it why do you think because oh because you're 25 if i mean it not because like 25 is old, but because you'll be in school, you're gonna be in school for a long time to be an um, anesthesiologist. It take a long time to be there. Um, that's like, a, it's a long time. So if you've already started, then don't worry about it. But I think a CRNA would be way, um, it would take less time to reach the um, almost the same goal because even though you're a CRNA, like you won't, you'll be working under the anesthesiologist. But if you wanna be an anesthesiologist, I say go for it. I'm just trying to keep like the your student loan debt down and you getting into the field a lot faster. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, okay, so I'm sorry, 22. 22 still ain't bad. Maybe I got you confused. I wanna be, I'm 22. I, maybe I got you confused with somebody else. I'm so sorry. But I would definitely, I mean, CRNAs, I mean, it's, I'm sorry, anesthesiologists are great. It's just a lot of liability that come with it, a lot of school that come with it, and a lot of um student loan debt that come with it. I met a lot of doctors that's got a lot of student loan debt, and it's just not attractive to me because it put them in a position where they have to be at work. I'll be 25 when I get off. I'll be 25 when I start off as a surgical tech. Oh, I see, I see. I'm a PCT. Oh, patient care tech at a hospital. Would it be best for me to transfer to sterile processing tech? Processing tech or a sterile processing tech while I attend school for surge tech? If you don't have to go to school for it and they're going to pay you some more money, I would say, yeah. I would say, yeah, anyway, because 
if you're going to school for it, they're not going to make you get certified to be a stair processing tech. Then yeah, because you're going to go learn the instruments. If you don't do nothing in el nothing else in stair processing, learn the instruments, learn them because you're going to need to know them. And you need to know what they do for like, like how you can um, interchange certain instruments to do different things. Because some instruments may be made for one thing, but you can improvise when you know all of the um, instruments and how they can be used. But I would definitely, because, and then too, you'll get more familiar with just some of the, um, what's the word, procedures and stuff. <laughs> I got some time. It says, they offer basic EMT classes at the fire department where I live. Would you recommend me taking it to help? Um, EMT and surgical tech are so different. Okay, EMT is so chaotic. You don't know what you're getting into. That was stressful to me. Surgical tech ain't, I mean, being in the OR is stressful, but I don't know. It might help. I, anatomy, yes, because you need to know anatomy. So it will help with the anatomy. But emergency medicine and what you're going to do in the field is going to be a little bit different than how it's going to be handled in the OR. Have you ever been on a travel assignment with other traveling techs? Oh, come on. With other who wasn't certified? Yes. What did you think about that? Them making the same but not being certified? We don't make, well, it depends. We don't be, we don't make the same. First of all, wait a minute. I don't know about traveling. I think some of them were certified at one point on a strike, but most of the time the, the, um, I think you can work at some places as, as a traveler, not certified. But from what I see, most places want you to be certified to travel. Um, but in the OR, I mean, in a regular staff, like hospital, the, the, cert, the certified surgical tech makes more. Um, so do you think it's best for me to become certified school tech CRNA? CRNA ain't gonna make more money. It just depends on what you wanna do. Like, like I say, if you, if you thinking of like something long term, like you want to do this for the rest of your life. I mean, you can go if you don't have a certain amount of time that you want to be an anesthesiologist, then I would say pursue that and just don't say it like don't put a certain amount of time on when you're going to become an anesthesiologist. But it's going to take a long time because they are doctors like it, they are doctors. And so in the OR, it's the it's the surgeon and then like the second person in charge is like the anesthesiologist. So both of y'all and honestly, I've seen you know, one dog asks the anesthesiologist, not so much how to do the surgery, but you know, like whatever the anesthesiologist said, that's what it's going to be. Like it ain't, we, if they say we ain't doing the case, we ain't doing the case. So I would just be, I don't want to deter you from being an anesthesiologist. I just think, I mean, or women know a CRNA. I, I think CRNAs are like the next best thing to be an anesthesiologist, obviously, but you could go be a nurse be you could go be an OR and I would prefer instead of like well I don't even know because either way it would be beneficial what I was going to say was I would prefer you to be a OR nurse and then go be like a CRNA but that's one of the hard ones surgical tech and CRNA they not really they don't do the same thing and they definitely don't make the same amount of money surgical tech scrub techs are gonna just be mainly on you know the technical aspect of the case whether it's instrumentation you know, anything like that. CRNAs is all about airway and medication and just making sure, you know, that you keep the patient alive, vital signs, making sure that, you know, the head of the patient is cared for. So I would be careful. Like, I wouldn't spend time. If you know you want to be an anesthesiologist, I wouldn't even worry about uh, scrub tape. Or if you know you want to do um, CRNA, I wouldn't even worry about scrub tape. How much effort do you have to put into general you well if you're trying to get an associate's or if you want to have some type of degree then you need prerequisites and like i said you can just go to the local your local um community college's website and they'll have on there what the prerequisites for the surgical tech program is and then you can go clip out of as many of them as you can if you clipped out of all your prerequisites it will cut down most of your first year in college a lot of people don't want it like a lot of people won't tell you that it says i want to work six months out of the year out of the world the other six i don't have any kids so with traveling is it possible to make yep it's definitely possible mm -hmm, so is that's what i did last year 
That's exactly what I did. And then I took like a contract as a, I did a strike. And then that was it. And I'm going to tell you, the strikes is it, you guys. Like, if you can get on the strike team, then you in the game. Do you feel CST versus? Oh, definitely NBST certification. I don't know about the NCCT certification, but the NBSTSA is a national one. So get that one. Such beautiful tea. Thank you. <laughs> I had to smile, didn't I? <laughs> what is a strike team so it's not really like a well i guess it is a team so to speak but what happens is these hospitals will go on strike and they'll fly in other um medical professionals to do the job because it's uh, against the law for them to have like patients so many patients but not a, not enough um medical people or whatever to do the job so you have to they they will fly in Surgical techs, um, nurses, I've seen um, case managers, ER nurses, ICU nurses, all those kind of, put, all those people. And they pay you a lot more. So just to give you an example of how much I made on a strike, if you wanted to, so what they'll do is they'll pay for you to fly. They'll fly you out. And a way to get on the strike team is just to have your resume and to have like to register with as many travel agency as you can because some of you don't know who's going to win the bid so as long as you like are registered with all of them as many as you possibly can then you will be able to um then you'll be able to get on the strike team so to speak and then they'll pay you about this i'm gonna just say it was like 1300 a day sometimes and then it was like one time it was like a thousand dollars that day and then i was there for like three days or something like that so you can make like if the strike is if it's a strike and you can go like i would say go are the courses to become an anesthesiologist hard i wouldn't know but i would assume that it would for us uh anesthesiologists imagine it so you got to get your undergrad first so get a bachelor's hopefully it's in some type of medical um health field then you got to go into your um residency i'm pretty sure is what they have to go through and so i mean just when i look at anesthesiologists i automatically think of pharmacology and pharmacology like to me is like it's not hard but you got to think of math and formulations and all of that stuff and so and if you mess up you know you got somebody's life in your hands so you got to be careful with that um once a surgical tech a minute once a surgical tech how much schooling is needed to be so now you have to go back to school to be a first assistant and we'll talk about that if y'all want to so i took my test i failed it i got to take it again that was another three hundred dollars so yeah <laughs> and it's um it, i think the first assist you can go to um here in florida you can go to gulf coast state college they offer first assist, so I say go there if you want to because it is a state college and you can get financial aid to go there. Um, Ms. Libby is the program director. She is really nice. I have spoke to her and worked with her on different occasions for different um, reasons, but that's a state college. Then I think it is ACE, I think is the other company that you can go through right now to be a, a first assistant. Um, but most of them are self-paid and they're about $5,000, I believe, extra. There is another um, first assist program at, and it's like a master's program. I can't remember what college. I want to say West Virginia. Um, they had a college there for first assistants. Can you trust? Can you trust in me? <laughs> Wait a minute. Can you trust in me? Don't know about the trust. I can I trust in you, girl. I trust in you. I trust in you, Ari. I just no wait a minute. I don't trust my parents. Wait a minute. I'm only 22. Yes, no, stop working at McDonald's. Um, Ariel, you, you can actually, I mean, if you want to go to school to be a cosmetologist, I'm a cosmetologist. Oh Lord. If you want to go to school to be a surgical tech, go be a surgical tech. But working at McDonald's, I would say if you can um it's it's more thing. I worked at McDonald's when I was in high school, so I mean I feel your pain. But if you want to do something outside of that, like go do another hustle. Like I went and go to, I would get a hustle that pay more than McDonald's, and then I would go to surgical tech school. Like I'm all about hustling. If you can braid some hair, or without or do make, I don't, wouldn't do makeup. But if you can do something that don't require you to make money to pay money to go to school, 
I would do that and then go to school. But I trust in you. I think you can do it. I think if you're going to be a CRNA, anything that's going to require like anything over four years of school, you need to start now because it's going to fly by. And then you're 22. I had my son at 25. And the thing is, like, as women, you know, we get to take care of the kids. So even if you do have a husband and he there with you, like, you still got to take care of the kids and him, you know, and yourself. So what would you say is the heart overall hardest part of surgical tech school well my surgical tech school was in the military so the hardest part was like somebody yelling at me at like five o'clock in the morning as we like pt and we still got to go do like you know classwork but i would say probably like mentally the hardest part would have been i mean i don't even really know because it was so long ago but like right now just studying for like the first assist exam again pharmacology kids like if you don't understand what the drugs do and all of that stuff, like surgical tech might, I don't, it don't really go that far into detail, I think, with some of the drugs. But I would say pharmacology for me is something that I like, I wouldn't say struggle with, but I would like be considering like, oh, I need to know how to do this. Um, what else was the hardest part of just the instruments is overwhelming because there's so many of them and they all do different things and some of them look alike and some of them don't but they you know it's just one of those i heard certified surgical tests making forty thousand. they probably do make it that's about right um i somebody on my page i saw two guys i'm gonna go back i saw two or i don't know if they were guys but i saw two people going back and forth with like the price um of 14 dollars an hour I don't know that surgical techs are making $14 an hour right now. That's pretty low. Um, I'm a travel surgical, a travel stair processing tech currently on assignment. Do you think I should go permanent after a year of travel? Wait a minute, go, wait a minute, go permanent at home. Oh, at a home hospital for a year. So are you a CST? Wait a minute, I see I'm confused. Are you a CST? Is that Shannon? Yeah, Shannon. Dennis. I'm a traveling CST tech currently on assignment. Do you think I should go permanent at a, at my home hospital for a year and then travel as a CST? If you're a traveling CST and certified assignment postings on Facebook travel pages. Yeah. If you a CST, um, I would probably just travel now. Like, if you need to go home for if you need to if you feel like you need to um to go get some more knowledge or whatever then i would say yeah but if you already a surgical tag then you could i would just take one of the jobs and because the truth is as long as here in louisiana oh it's not my um my son and dad from franklin we didn't have to be certified just hospital experience so i'm thinking get my cst then go travel yeah i would do that but i don't know if you got the like if you want to be at home for a year just to get your experience up and stuff like that while you um getting your cst then do yeah do that but i wouldn't you don't have to yeah Eric, you ain't got no kids 22 listen listen i i only did the three years uh, yeah then as we sound what should i do before august become a cst mm. I mean, if your ultimate goal, because those pay, like, <clears throat> I think it's going to have to be, I want to give you, like, advice on it, but you got to take in, like, what you want to do with this. Like, how you, what's your overall goal? Like, when you get, let me see how to say it. Because CST is, like, if you got a five-year plan, like, I'm going to work for five years and I'm going to do something else, then I would, I would do that. But I would, if you know long term that you want to be like a CRNA or anesthesiologist, I would just, I don't even know what to tell you. Because those are like life changing decisions. Because CST is going to take about a year to do. CRNA in med school, you can go be a CST and then like start going to med school. It'll it'll definitely prepare you for med school. And I do know you could also do um PA if that's something that you want, physician assistant. Um, but they don't do CRNA work, but you could do that as well. But I would if you just trying to get out of McDonald's and you can go get in a quick little program, you could do that and then that could pay for school. C uh CST could pay for you to go to CRNA school. Um but I would just be careful with how much 
time you're going to be in school. CRNA, that's about eight years because you still got to get a bachelor's degree and then you got to go through their program, which is, I think is about two years. All right, let me see what else got. Listen. But don't get pregnant while you're in the midst because them babies, I'm telling you, like, they cute and all of that, but they cost a lot. Certified, you should make more than, yeah, definitely. I'm in my first year uncertified. What was your least favorite cases as a surgical tech? Mm, I did abortions, probably abortions, tabs, probably. And I don't do abortion. I don't believe in abortions for myself as a means of birth control. But I do think if we don't offer abortions in medical um, environments, that people will be sticking coat hangers and stuff up in them, and that's a whole nother ball game. So. I am a certified step, so I know my instruments and procedures. I just need to do hands-on in the OR to travel as a CST more than us. Yeah, and that's just probably like 300. What I'm seeing right now, you guys, like I, um, let me see if I can pull up my email and I'll just show you, um, I'll just tell you what type of pay I see out right now for um, surgical tests. Let's see, once you start traveling and get that weekly pay. I'm trying to tell you it's hard to go back. Look, I was just, <laughs> I was telling somebody else that not too long ago. Like one of the hardest things I had to learn was how to like stop having that weekly convenient pay. Cause now I'm more like in an entrepreneur space and you know, the money come how it come. But that's definitely like, and then when you on a strike, they pay you that day. Like you know, you're like, whoa, snap, what happened? It says, do you think I should go become a general scrub tape, scrub tape, then apply? I would, I would be um, a general scrub tape. What does that mean? Like just a scrub tape in general? Where did it go? Um, is it, what happened? Hold on, did I delete that one? I hope I did. How much is it? I think I deleted one by accident. You guys. Once you start traveling, okay, now I read that one. Do you think I should go? Oh, that's it. Okay, um, become a general scrub tech, then go to med school. I think that might be a good play. I think that's a good one. Um, medical school is like, just have, give yourself time. Like, don't make it, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Surgical tech school is cool. And if you do a actual program where you can get credits, like go to a community college where they give you the associates program, then your credits will work, excuse me, towards your medical school. And if, and if you're going to be a surgeon, like, yeah, surgical tech will help you because you already understand what's kind of going on in the OR. How much more per hour should you expect in a raise certified versus non-certified? We'll just say about $2.00. About two dollars more, two like two or three dollars more. It just depends on what part of the country you're in. I'm in Florida, so it's a low paying state. Um, everybody likes to be in Florida, so and then you know, especially like now in the winter time, it's December. It's a yeah, I'm in December, it's almost December, and I'm out here, out here sweating, so people like to be down here. Is it possible to get stale process and job with no experience? Wow, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's possible, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what is it, Jambella, Jambelli, Jambella, Jambel. I'm terrible with names, y'all. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Strike team is calling you. Strike team is where it's at. I'm in North Florida. Me too. J J Lou. I'm sorry. Facts. What is your opinion on these so-called online search programs? Can you find your place? To, you can find your place in clinicals. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't heard about any online surgical tech programs. You find your own place to do clinicals. That's what, so finding your place, ugh, that's kind of hard though. Like if you don't have no, you know, way to, because the school, that's why I would go to school because they can do all of that, like negotiating with the, um, the other, pro, like other places where you can get your clinicals in. I just don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know what to say about that, Shannon. Honestly, I don't know what to say about, like, doing an online program. Because even if you finish the program and you ain't do your clinicals, you got to go do your clinicals, you know. And I think that's messed up because right now, a lot of hospitals, from what I can see, they are cutting back on how many students, even nursing students, are allowed in, you know, in the hospitals right now. So, I would be kind of... Um, I 
don't be scared to pull about that. I ain't gonna lie. Only because you don't want to get stuck with having everything done and now you got to go out and find your own clinical site. Like, that ain't what's up. Can I buy some Gucci? But no, you can't buy no Gucci with nothing, girl. You better go buy you some stocks, area. Ain't no Gucci belts. Ain't no, ain't no Birkin bags. Ain't none of that. We stacking our bread over here, right? We, we investing. LOL. How the L. Wait a minute. How? Yeah. Now, I was just taking that too, Jay. <laughs> Somebody got a bridge to get right. It's, it's a lot of liability and paperwork. Yeah, that's yeah for sure. Because even with me scrubbing um, cases to get my first assist clinical stuff done, I had to carry male practice insurance. Like, no BS. I had to buy my own male practice insurance. So they might make you do something like that. Go get you. They do have surgical tech and first assist male practice insurance. And you like, why do you need to care about practice? Because the whole point of you being in school is the school covers the liability, like Jay said. Like, that's what they're there for. And I think really what's happening, and I don't know, because I ain't working with no school, but I, this is what it could be. Um, one of my best friends, she is a nursing um, instructor. This is where she's telling me, like, they they don't really want the students in the schools like that right now because of how, you know, everything is with this crisis so i will be careful of an online program because they might just be trying to like you know make it easier so because they know people they're gonna have a lot of people that's not going to be able to go to clinical so if they just cut the clinical part out and then it just give you that the didactics and then all you got then you are responsible for the clinical part i just don't know if that's like that's what's up somebody got to bring yeah that's that's a little bit much it's for a seat yeah, I'm not really like a CTT, uh, a CCT, per CTT, CCT, um, um, I can't even think of it, um, certification person. I, I just went through MBS TSA because that's what the Navy told us to do. So that's what I did. Even though I didn't do it when the Navy told me to do it, but I did it later because it sounds like, yeah, I would be careful about that one. Um, yeah, they put, yeah. Sounds, yeah, 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 Jay. That's exactly what it sounds like. I'll be careful with that, guys. Like, maybe. Because you, if you don't finish your clinicals, you're not a surgical tech. And if they charge you the money to do the online course or whatever, like, you still not a surgeon. You can't go get no job. You still got to go do the whole clinical process. Unless, like, if you can go get it, if you can find the pro, if you can find somewhere to do your clinicals first, or if, like if you was already a stale process and take a, so if you already like know somewhere where you can go, that might be beneficial. But it was hard for me to, um, what I end up doing for myself as a, as a first assist to get the, cl the clinical credits or the clinical hours that I need. Cause when I took my first assist exam or when I went to apply to take, to qualify for the first assist, my, my credits, no, my cases had expired. Like your cases are only good for two years. And so my cases had expired. So I had to go get, um, I had to go get my cases on my own. And I basically went and applied to a whole bunch of surgical tech jobs to just be able to do clinicals with them. Yeah, if you got a connection then you'll be in the game, but I'll be careful with those um, online. They need to cut that out because that's just not even something that you can really like do so i'm gonna go back to this i got some more i think let me see so this girl somebody named gabriella garcia what is your schedule like how do you what is it how do your weeks vary uh oh how do your weeks vary hold on come on go back so I think she was asking me, what does my weeks look like? Um, my hours, I was working, um, I do like a 12 hour shift. I do like 12 hours, but they do hurt. They they like, I can feel a 12 hour shift on me. So I don't really like to go to work every day, you guys. I'm not gonna even lie to you. So it's kind of hard for me to say I work 40 hours a week because I would work 40 hours a week, but I wouldn't work 40 hours a week every week. And so oh, she asked me if, um, is it consistent or always changing? So normally I work PRN, so it would be up to me. If you want to work 40 hours, you can get 40 plus, especially if they got call. Um, let me see. 
Let's see here. I think that's all I got on here, guys. Somebody emailed me on Instagram as well. I think I got to it, though. Yeah, 4 10s uh, is good. 4 10s is definitely good. How does the call work on travel assignments? I didn't take call. <laughs> I put I put that in my contract. No call. <laughs> so if I put no call in my contract, then I could choose if I want the call or not. You know what I'm saying? Now, some places will say they want you to take call, but nah, dog, we ain't taking no call. Not if, and then uh, the funny thing is I wouldn't mind taking call at the last place I was at because the call was um, labor and delivery. And I mean, I, labor and delivery is easy to me. Can you, can they kick you out of school? Yup, they sure can. If you fail, they sure can. What a blessing, right? Travelers is eating. Tra yeah, traveling, um, our is making money out here too. Like they making a, everybody making money right now. Like if you want to be in the OR right now and you already got your like you already a scrub taking all of that stuff, they eating right now, you guys. I'm just not I'm not rocking with the um I ain't going into these hospitals unless I have to because my son is uh, as he has asthma. And so he's considered like high risk, I guess, or whatever with this whole pandemic situation so i'm trying to stay away from that but i'm trying to open up my email to see if i can see any of these current places that have some jobs and then i could kind of give y'all a, a um an idea of what they what they saying all right let me see here so hang on guys i'm not looking at my computer um It's one company that I'm looking for. They send me an email every day. They send me an email every day. Where is she? I think her name is Megan. Wait a minute. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Let me look back up here. Make sure I don't miss y'all. Yes, J. Lou, I'm on an assignment. 45 minutes. That's good, Joanne. Man, only time. We in the list are on total. Yeah, I'm waiting at least one more year to travel. Year to travel. I'm waiting to get at least one more. You could travel right now, honestly, if you wanted to. Don't think about it too much. Just hop off. Cause I was I. I remember a couple of times I taught myself out of contracts, but I, I think you should do it. Yeah. So the girl who um the woman I shouldn't call her a girl. The woman who sends me um surgical tech it's a couple of them but this one she sent them to me every day like so i said if um i'm gonna start like letting people know what's out here so this one i hope this don't mess up i'm gonna try to show y'all this hold on I'm trying to close some of this so y'all don't see all of my little business this i'm gonna open you gonna open Okay, so here we go. Uh oh, I'm still connected. Let's see. I be thinking I need to learn more. Also, folks who haven't got hired, they can look at agencies. Oh, I um HCA. I just realized was had a hiring um recruitment area because every time I see HCA here, it's a house like I worked at a hospital that was HCA. Most travelers, I don't. Most travelers I see don't have orientation. We have orientation. Um, it's like a week. And because at most places you still have to do hospital orientation. So you would go for like a week to do all like the hospital paperwork and all that stuff. Because they still, you still get like an email address and all of that stuff. So they still make you go through like a hospital type of orientation. And then once you get to uh, the OR, they make you do like, like you got a day or two to find everything. Hey, I have anxiety. Girl, you got better get like I'm so nervous about what lifestyle I'll have if I become a CST. Don't be nervous. I mean, if you're nervous, then you need to pick something different. But I mean, I don't have no anxiety. You just have to make a plan and make it work. Like, if you're gonna be a surgical tech, just say, okay, I'm gonna do it for this amount of years and then have your exit plan. So for you, your exit plan area could be going into CRNA. Like I'm gonna be a surgical tech for 
three or four years to pay for you to get to school, get you some experience in the OR. You'll be networking and making friendships, hopefully, while you're in the OR. And then, y'all, that's how a lot of stuff work is just like networking and making sure that you know, like, who you know, because who you know matters. It really does. You and um. If you know the right people and you meet people that you know they'll hook you up so but don't don't be anxious and jay like it'll never be a time where i feel like i know everything if you don't have any kids you're gonna be able to eat and stay yeah probably gonna see seven easy and, and over time i say a hundred thousand with overtime if you're working full time if you're gonna work 40 hours a year well it depends on where you're working at too it depends on where you're um where you're going to be at but i would say you can easily with no kids you can easily make as much as you want honestly it just depends on how much you're trying to um how many hours you're trying to work and all that stuff go for it i went for a cna making eight to travel no sir yep see i woke up one day tired of living check to check and just went for it yeah you really do just kind of have to like just be like if you already know you can make money doing something like if you like if you already know you can make eight dollars an hour or you know at the minimum i can make ten dollars an hour okay well if what you finna try don't work then go back to that but you won't know if it'll work un unless you get out here and try so i'm gonna show y'all this um um let's see if this got some or stuff on here all right here we go i hope y'all can see this hold on all right, here we go. Let me see. I gotta be careful because it'll got a little touch screen going on. All right, so OR, those are OR nurses. So here's OR Tech, 13 week, $35. That's 24000 $2,400 a week. Um, The bottom one for, so that's 40 hours. The other one is, hold on, it's backwards on the screen. So, for 40 hours, one is $24, uh, $2,400 a week, and the other one is $2,100 a week. And then, hold on, I'm gonna go find some more. Cause this got like nurses stuff on here. So if you wanna be, if you're a surgical tech and you wanna be a recruiter, you could just sit here and do this type of stuff all day and like look at these type of, um, like these are all nursing positions right here. And then there's some tech positions. So let me see. I know it's showing up backwards in the computer. I mean, on the TV, but I'm just going to give y'all an idea. Um, OR Tech in Michigan right now is $1,800 a week. Um, let me see. Hold on, guys. I'm going to look at the computer in one, I mean, at the phone in one second. Okay, so somebody said they wanted to be an OB, wanted to work in OB, so in the Bronx, <laughs> if you're in the Bronx right now, I'm going to show y'all. So, let me see, over here you see it says Bronx, and then it's got three OB tech positions, and they're making $2,200 a week. Now, I don't know, I think New York is a little expensive, uh-oh, sorry, I kicked the thing. I know New York is a little expensive, so, you know, you have to take it for what it is. And then two, is this time of year, like a lot of people will um, up their prices in colder areas because of the time of year. But guess what Florida does this time of year? They drop their prices because they know people will come down here and work for a little bit of that. Um, let me see. Um, it's, what is this? Rochester, New York, 2200 a week. Um, let me see. What else we got on here? First, no. Oh my God, it's a lot of nursing. So that's about it for the OY techs. The nurses has got this thing on lockdown. Hold on guys, I'm just trying to make sure I ain't miss. OY tech, um, Springfield, Oregon, 1900 a week. Um, what is this? Brigham, Brighamton, Brighamton. I don't know. That is New York, twenty two hundred a week. Mm, I think that's all of them, you guys. Oh, I take. Um, let's see, outpatient, 
Oh no, that's a nurse. So anyways, that's the one I got for um oh I already said that's that's all I got for this one, OR Tech Outpatient, um Burlington, Massachusetts. Wait a minute, where is it? 2200 a week. So yeah, guys, it's plenty of like jobs out here if you're trying to get it. All right, let me see if you don't have any kids, Ariel. Let me see. Yeah, depend on. Yeah, it depends on how many hours you want to work. You're so. Let me say, you young girl. This is the time to jump. Job, yeah, honey. You don't have to be loyal to these hospitals, like just <laughs> to these jobs. You get it. Honestly, like on some realness, you by the time six months, you should be the six months to a year, you should be to learn everything that hospital have to teach you. If you can get into the room, like if it's a if it's cardiovascular, you might not be able to get in there. But it, for everything else, general, GYN, ortho, neuro, u urology. GI get as much information in that if you if they got trauma get in trauma. I don't really like trauma It remind me of being um, an EMT that make my nerves bad I'm talking uncertified to area and if you want to buy Gucci no don't buy no Gucci No, don't buy no Gucci go buy you some stocks or something go buy some Amazon shares <laughs> Let's see I be thinking I need to learn everything about hearts and vascular you can learn about hearts and vascular But you don't need to know it because if you ain't if you can get into the room, then great. Get in there. But don't let that hold you back. Those two services will hold you back. If you can do ortho, get out here and get into some ortho. Do some ortho. Because, shoot, I love ortho. I think I like ortho almost better than... I can do a, a lot of general GYN and stuff like that. But I like ortho. Like, give me a broken bone any day of the week. Not me personally. Be like, you know, I'll do one. I'll squirt right on in. Yeah, trying to run from the snow. Yeah, they get they get they behind down here, honey. Like right now ain't the time. If you want to work, first of all, Florida ain't even on the map right now. Like you can't even get down here because by the time they are like available, they gone and people will come and they'll work for like twelve hundred, fourteen hundred, you know, a week. And you just like I'm not work. That's why I decided that, um when I went last year to cali was it like yeah last year to cali that my second half of the year was gonna be in florida because it was cold it was getting cold up there and down here they don't want to pay nothing for that like this time of year you welcome been looking at your videos throughout my journey before i got hired i'm glad i could help i don't i said i wasn't gonna post some more surgical tech videos on this channel because i wanted to like change it up a little bit and do more of a um lifestyle channel but you guys made it hard because I was like turning around and I'm the only comments is y'all asking me about surgical tech stuff. I got some on my Instagram, but I'm not going to, um, are you certified J-Law? I think he said he was, no, I think he said, uh, I think he said he was certified or he not, maybe he is, he not. Um, but yeah, you guys, that, I think we've been out here for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So maybe I'll do another one. I, I know you guys be looking for like surgical tech stuff, but this channel, I was trying to kind of do it more like just a lifestyle thing. But if y'all need the information, I'm going to give it to you because, you know, that's what the people want. So that's what it is. And I know it's a lot of videos on this channel that's already surgical tech. And I'm not going to, at one point, I was just going to take them down. But I'm not going to take them down because y'all like people still be coming and people still be needing like, you know, help or whatever. So I want to be a service. That's what I, um, like, that's kind of why I ended up in the medical field. Like, I love being a service and helping people sharing, you know, sharing my information with you guys and connecting you too. Because, like, y'all in the chat, y'all connecting. And honestly, like, that's a lot of time. That can help y'all too. Like, you could be in the same city or same state as somebody. And you could just be, like, on this channel and, like, interacting on my channel. And anyways, you can connect, network with each other. See where y'all at because then too when you get in a job then you could be like hey you know such and such you looking for somewhere we hiring and that's how i go you guys like a lot of times we just be networking and shooting looking out for people just letting everybody know like this was i got a homegirl she called me every time she go on another contract hey you coming out here no i ain't going nowhere right now <laughs> and then we'll call like somebody else hey you want to go on the strike and then like all of us that went on the strike Especially when we was going on strikes with um, Maxim, 
You was going on strike. It was like the same group of people going on the strike. So we was just like hanging out. It was cool. You built like a, a camaraderie with each other. And then you got people because y'all on a strike, y'all from everywhere. So now you got friends in Cali. You got friends in Florida, Texas, Georgia, Ohio, Michigan. They just be all over the place. So network with as many people be friend like you ain't got to be like hanging out and eating dinner at the house nothing like that but just like on, on youtube not on youtube but on facebook going to these groups you know comment on somebody's stuff because then people start noticing like hey i seen such and such i seen you comment on this i seen i ain't real active on facebook no more but it is a way for you to connect with people and connect with the recruiters because they're gonna always call you um, put your information out there with as many recruiters as you can. Go ahead and do those skills checklists. Just get all that stuff out of the way. So when you're ready to like actually do the stuff, like if you're ready to go on the trip, you can just go. You can just go. You you like if you're ready to take a contract, you just hit up you know one of these um, agencies and you just go on the contract. You just take just go ahead and take that assignment. But I think that's all I got for you guys. That was exciting. I wasn't really expecting to do um. A surgical tech video today but i seen the guy the one the one comment he was just like he needed help or whatever i hope he see this video because he commented twice and i think he's on my instagram too let me go to my instagram real quick and make sure that um i hope i can log in this way i'll never log in to instagram on my um on my phone i'm on my um laptop let me see if i can even get in instagram what is it instagram.com and see if I, I don't even know if I can answer the question because honestly, like, it's in my messages. So I don't know if they let you see your messages. I can't even get in. Oh, yes, I can. Let me see what it say. If it'll let me read his comment. Because I do be wanting to, like, make sure I answer y'all comments. Oh, wait a minute. Instagram, I did something new here. See, I don't even be on here that much, y'all. I be trying to stay focused. All right, let me see. He said, oh boy, okay, okay, okay. No underscore negative vibe. That's who this, this person is. And I think it's the same. Okay, so it says, and I hope he um could see this. So no underscore negative vibe. Good morning, how are you doing? I came across your videos on YouTube for Surgical Tech. Please, I have a question about... I have a question about that. Which one do you think is the best to get an associate's or a bachelor's or should I just get a, cert a certificate? So if that's the question that you have. So he asked if he should get a associate's, a bachelor's degree or a certificate. So this goes back to my, my answer earlier. If you're going to get a bachelor's or a certificate, then that's just going to be because you're going to go to school. You're going to do some further school, excuse me, further schooling later. Sorry, guys, I gotta get some drink. But if you just wanna go be a surgical tech and work and just get some um, money or whatever for a couple years, and I would just say get the certificate and get out. Just have a five year plan. If, but just make sure you stick into your five or 10 year plan. Who is this? Clinical phase, wait a minute. Good morning. My name is Raylene. Raylene. She a scrub tech student in Miami. I'm currently at the clinical phase. I'll be graduating in April. I would try, I would try like your advice on the certification test. Oh, I know on your blog on YouTube, you're going to put together a study group. Mm -hmm. So let me see, did I miss something? Have you ever seen people bring their kids and stuff? Yes, honey. And you could get a whole RV. Like, on some realness, like, if I would have just stuck, oh, I bit my tongue. If I would have just stuck with scrubbing and, like, even next, I got some other things going on, so I don't know how next year going to play. I want to go travel the world next year, so, like, out the country, like, outside of the country. So, we'll see how that goes. But if that doesn't, if I'm not, like, able to do that, then definitely taking a contract with an RV and my kid, honey, because the RV, like, if you got an RV, and I ain't talking about getting a huge one. I'm talking about, like, one that you could, maybe a travel trailer that you could either drop or if it was, like, a camper B van that you could, like, live in if you was, you know, if it was, like, a couple of y'all. I would do that. I would totally, like, I'm all for that. Um, but I just wanted to just read what she said. Um... 
I would like to be a part of the study group. Okay, so let me. Oh, this is. Oh my God, that is a really old. Um, she sent me something else. That's why I popped up. That was the old one. So, anyways, guys. I did put, I had somebody reach out to me that actually got in contact with me by like phone and for the surgical test study guide. So I did put a, I did start another channel and I did put one video on the channel, but I might take that, that video down and just put it on this channel and then just keep the surgical stay up, the surgical test stuff and my lifestyle stuff on this channel and just like, let it be what it is. But the surgical test study group, I am putting together because it's a lot of people that be hitting me up that be needing help. And I thought, to me, it seemed easier that you guys would just be able to go and download the stuff that I was telling you to download, like the CST outline, the reference list, and go from there. And then also get in one of the books that's off the reference list. So, oh, the curriculum as well. So I linked all of that stuff. And you can download it and then go buy one of the books if you need help studying for the surgical tech exam. But people want a study group. So I'm going to see how to put that together. Like I said, I got a lot of stuff. Like I got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, let me see. It says, before you go, just to confirm, you said you think six months on hand in the OR is enough to get. I feel like six months in the OR... Okay, this is how I'm going to say it. If, yo, if you can go to different services, yes. If your hospital like only lets you scrub in one service, then you might have to be there longer. But if you're able, like, do a, do a couple of months in one and then go to the next service, like, get as much information from the different services, the, yeah, the different services that you can. But if, if you feel like you need to be there like a year, then be there a year. But I feel like six months, after six months, you just gonna kind of get into this like groove of doing the same thing over and over again. Don't let them put you in the same services. Like don't get stuck just doing GYN for the ladies. Don't get stuck just doing ortho for the guys. Like don't let them just put you in one service and then that's it. Like go do the service, maybe be in there for a couple months. And then go to the next service so you can get that. Because your whole point is to get, if you're trying to travel, to get as much information as you can just so you can get comfortable with the, the procedures. You ain't got to, because even if you go to another place, as long as you understand the procedure, the and the everything else is going to fall in place. Like if you kind of get what's going on, sorry guys, my allergies is adding up. But if you can kind of get what's going on, then I would just go travel. Like if you got a concept of like, you know, a whipple or anything, anything that's like big, get comfortable with the big cases because the little cases ain't gonna be nothing. Like go do some hysterectomies, go do some open stuff. Like get used to that big intimidating stuff where you got to count instruments, you got to count everything, you know, like get used to that. So then when you got the little stuff, you know, that's like a breeze. So that's what I would say. But yeah, definitely go get the information, as much information as you can don't let them like stick you because i know at a couple of places they would just stick you in a service and then you would just be like all you know how to do is that one trick like labor and delivery and you ain't gonna know nothing but c-section so i wouldn't say go straight to labor and delivery to nobody i would say go to the main or so you can actually learn you know some stuff and then go to labor and delivery because labor and delivery are you if you only know labor and delivery then that's all you know and labor and delivery and the main or are not the same L and D and the nurses on L and D have, they're not like OR nurses and I'm not like coming for them in L and D, but have like, some of them don't know how to open gowns, you know, like they about to contaminate your whole back table and in their head, they thinking like, it's those with certification. What you mean? Um, do new surgical tech grads. I'm assuming that do not have cert a certification. Do they get paid? So the certification is what will pay you more. The the degree they don't really care about, like honestly. I hope that answered your question. Um, Ruth G. Kersey. No, that's not Kersey. Key Cry, is that it? Future nurse. I hope I said that right. Y'all I'm like the worst with names. Like that's just the worst. But if the, the certification is gonna make the difference in the pay, not the degree. The degree for surgical tests is only if you're trying to go be like an instructor or something like that, or if you want to go get a further degree as a nurse or as a, you know, as something else in the medical field, a, a PA or something like that. But the degrees don't matter. Like a lot of people don't, like people don't know 
yo yo um when you go to human resources the only thing that they're gonna do it they're gonna base it off your experience and if you certified or not that's it like if you got a bachelor's degree they don't care if you got a certificate great the whole the only thing that they care about is that you was able to um complete the program because that's what it say it, it says you have to come um in a surgical tech job description it says completion of a surgical tech program they might they might um prefer an associate's degree but the requirement is not a degree and so um i forgot what i was talking about but yeah so that's that um thank you you're welcome it's, i know i'm like this i'm so bad with names and my name is kiaf i'm always correcting people and it's just like yeah mercy per, okay cursey okay i got you i'm slow like percy miller i know you might not that's master p i'm slow so yeah you guys i mean i hope that i'll maybe i'll do more because you guys are way more in, um engaged and i really appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time out today to like hang out with me yeah, I will. I had a good time with you guys. I'm I'm hungry, so like <laughs> I'm ready to go eat some more of my leftover Thanksgiving. Did y'all cook for Thanksgiving? Y'all cook for Thanksgiving. I messed up my dressing. My mama's talking about dressing in here. So yeah, you guys. If y'all um please like the video if you haven't and you still in here. Um it does help with YouTube. I guess they're gonna keep pushing my um channel to the top for surgical tech because I get most of my views from surgical tech videos and okay that's it sorry for messing with the thing so um if y'all don't have any more like feel free to ask me any more questions and then i'll try to answer them as quick as i can but i'm hungry i ain't gonna even lie you guys like i'm trying to get this thing to it just do what it wants to all right so nobody's asking no questions that means y'all don't have nothing don't nobody want to say nothing no positive vibes oh one thing i will say about being in the or and a lot of people don't talk about i guess maybe they do and i just don't hear mindset get your mind right be positive like think positive thoughts don't go don't have like negative thoughts that's something that's kind of hard for people like we don't realize how much negative talk we have so be positive like be, you're the best scrub tag you're the best you know mcdonald's worker for ariel right i think ariel was a mcdonald's worker like you're the best at that so be the best like if you don't think you're the best nobody else will you know i'm all about law of attraction you guys so if i put positive energy out there automatically it's going to come back positive so i want you guys to like remember that because one of the first questions i had on here was somebody asking me about their um like how to deal with people being rude to them in the or and I don't tolerate that like rudeness like my my demeanor doesn't come off like that in the or like i'm just very I, I like to have fun in the or like i'm very much like you know like we're gonna play some music until the patient go to sleep or, you know to the patient get in the room or whatever we're gonna enjoy ourselves but being negative is just not no need to go into details but why but while traveling have you dealt with racial profiling? oh i deal with racial profiling out the or <laughs> I do a racial profile all the time, I, you know, I'm, especially now I got my locks out, like, you know, black girl, I'm tight, yeah, shit, fuck them, you know, that's how I feel, not, and not to be like, because if you're not going to like me because I'm black, or you're going to automatically treat me like, for one, my name is Kiafa, so when they see my name, they automatically know I'm black, Um, when I talk, I talk, you know, with a southern draw because i don't talk black i don't even know what that is but i talk with a southern draw and I, and if i'm interacting with you i'm still me you know what i'm saying like i ain't finna change i don't care if you like for especially being from the south like i don't had i don't had a nurse manager threaten to call the cops on me because she couldn't intimidate me like here's the thing so because i have so many things going on outside and this is why i be like telling everybody to have a side hustle to do something outside of just being an employee because people treat you like you need a job especially if they think like because you black and you got kids and stuff like that like a lot of people and it's not always like every because i done met some amazing white people mexican people you know puerto rican filipino i know some good people you know that's not black but it is some ignorant people out there in the world that feel like you know black people are less than or whatever 
and especially being a female and then i'm kind of like not arrogant but like i'm confident in who i am and so having another stream of income allowed me to be confident when that lady decided because i was quitting the job and i and i don't really want to get this no energy but i was deciding that i was going to quit i had already put in my notice and i went to have a conversation you know letting them know like why i was quitting because they wanted to talk about it and so because I'm, I'm a good employee guys like also like i work hard for people but if you're gonna treat me if you're gonna mistreat me then i'm gonna like go somewhere else and i went into this place i was having this conversation and then i decided because she started yelling because you know people get aggressive and then i was like let me let me get let me get out of here because i'm already the black girl you know what I'm saying? like i'm already if i if my voice gets loud if i get upset or angry you know i'm the angry black woman you know how that goes so what i'll do now is i, I left i was leaving because i'm 37 so now i'm like getting to this point where i'm learning how to control my emotions a little bit and I know that it's certain people that's going to be like, be, they're going to try to intimidate you. They're going to try to get a certain reaction out you. Like, I have been doing this long enough to know, like, Karen is over there. Karen wants me to react. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to react for Karen. I'm going to leave. But she threatened to call the cops, I mean, in Florida. And, like, Jacksonville is not, like, a super bad place where it comes to, um, like, just black people getting killed for no reason. From what I could see but i will say this like at the time black people was still getting like shot on tv and stuff and it was like at the height in time and so when she threatened to call the cops to me i just knew at that point i was on my shit. and i'm gonna tell you why because if you got the threat and the call the cops on me because you can't get to me i have gotten to you without even trying to just by being me so i tell people especially black women black men minority i'm not gonna put black people in the same group as minorities but i'm gonna say african-american people and minorities because we get treated a little differently sometimes you know like you have to have more than one income stream because these people will come for you and they will fire you and not care that you ain't got nowhere to feed your kids they don't care about that you know what i'm saying like and a lot of people play these like games and stuff i'll talk about race like it doesn't um it don't bother me to talk about like racial issues because it's a thing in america like it has to be kind of, it's not always a thing i'm not gonna always use like racism as a thing but it do be kind of like there and sometimes it's underlying especially like down here in florida to me it's very much more in your face and other places i've been it's behind your back so it's kind of like they smiling in your face but you know they're behind your back trying to set you up and you you being friends so what i'm gonna say is you guys i work with my ancestors and i know this might be a little bit <laughs> i am this is who i am you guys so i ain't i'm not sorry but i work with my ancestors so you can screw me over if you want so you get to deal with them like if you if i'm coming at you with good energy and positive energy and i'm showing you love because i know that that's what i want in return if you send negative energy to me my ancestors my angel guys the people that are here with me that the spirits i'm sorry if you guys aren't with that but that's what it is like whoever you believe in if they don't have your back then you need to believe in somebody else, something else. But allow, like, the the confidence that I have in the people, the energies and stuff that's around me is that if you send me bad energy, like, they get to deal with you. You get to deal with my ancestors. And because, you know, I'm African American. So my ancestors are African of African descent. And they know my heart and they know my intentions. And some of this is not my fight. Ain't that like some stuff in the Bible too that says this? Like, it's not for me to put up a fight with them. So if it's a racist person now, like they just miserable. And it's funny to me. Like, it's funny because you just don't like me because I'm black, but I'm amazing. And so are you. You know what I'm saying, guys? Like that racist shit is dumb. It's, it's really dumb. And it's people like, but honestly, like to answer your question, and I know I did already, but people sometimes don't even know they're racist like and their behavior that's why you have to kind of correct people when they cross you especially even in the or i'm not going to tell you to not cuss nobody out to, to cuss nobody out in the or or to you know lash out i'm not gonna say that but what i will say it's getting dark in here but what i will say is that you have to protect yourself and let people know that they cannot mistreat you and abuse you so you have to stand up for yourself now being like excuse me like i said being a black girl being anything other than what the minority i mean being anything of what the majority is you can take it how you want to so if you are the minority in your situation 
And if you are darker skinned, you do not get to yell. You do not get to get angry. You do not get to get like, you do not get to get any of that. So you have to learn how to like, you know, find other ways to kind of release your stuff. And so I don't know. I hope that wasn't too much for y'all. Cause that's just me being like, like honest. Cause it is a thing and it's, I see it more and I'm not trying to be funny, but older white men, have it more embedded into the ingrained into them not all of them guys i'm not i don't hate white men so don't go say that I, it's some white men that i rock with you know on a regular basis but <clears throat> i just don't agree with this closed-mindedness of she being ghetto because she black or she, or she you know an angry black girl or all of that like i don't like that and it's not fair when you in the or because sometimes the black girls know have to know more because they automatically get treated or even like mexican girls one of my good friends she mexican I, i'm gonna say this i'm gonna go y'all because i'm still hungry but i'm gonna say this my friend one of my friends she uh she mexican and we was in the military together and then we went to um we was going somewhere but anyways they call like the man straight called her back like it wasn't even nothing and he and thought it was a joke you know what i'm saying like people be thinking like some of this stuff be jokes and then when you fire off on them then you like the angry you know whatever and so but i say to all the people that's out there like get, get more than one i need to ask you a real academic question do you think it's better? <laughs> area i think you should be a crna i'm gonna just pick one for you i think be a crna i think you should be a crna I'm gonna pick it for you right now. But yeah, so that's what I got, um, Shan. I think that was Shan that asked me that. Yeah, that's, I mean, most black girls will tell you the same thing, honestly. When, if, if they like being like 100, they're gonna tell you the same thing. Some of them, some of us, some of us look like black girls, but we really not, like we kind of other people. Hold, hold on guys, let me see if I can get us some like, i'm getting grainy so i think it's finna either rain or i don't know but yeah um a lot of um a lot of girls that i know um just go for yeah area <laughs> that's what i say area go be a crna that's where the money is like they making bank over there they making bank over there honestly it's crna be a crna you're young enough you got time you ain't got no kids you know Go get, go get your money. Go be a CRNA. I know, like, honestly, and I, I mean, this ain't got nothing to do with your race, man. But I don't know, I don't, if you black, I don't know too many CRNAs that's black. I only, I met, I've met, I met one, I met two black anesthesiologists, and I think I know one black female CRNA, and I met her on a travel assignment. And so, you know, I'm going to say this too, and you guys, I know this ain't got nothing to do with race, but since Shan brought it up, <laughs> I'm going to say like too, I, I do think we sh there should be more um, African-American, Black, um, in it, just more diversity. I'll say it like that in the OR, because when I go to the OR, a lot of times I'll be the only Black girl in the OR. You know what I'm saying? And so I have to be comfortable with that. Sorry, guys, I wanted to chat to stay up, but it would not. Sometimes, oh, there you go. Sometimes you do have to learn how to be comfortable with being like the only black girl in the OR. And that's, you know, it could be uncomfortable, but you have to stand in your power. You have to stand in your power and just let them know, like, you here, you're not going to run me off. And if you decide to leave, you're going to leave on your own terms because you got other stuff going on. And you definitely should have more. I'm going to tell all y'all on this right now that's still on here. Get more than one stream of income. Even if you go to surgical tech school, even if you go traveling, have more than one have more than one stream of income. You never know. You never know what's gonna happen. You never know who's gonna come at you sideways. You know, like I was in there making deals with doctors. Like I was in there trying to get websites built for doctors. I'm trying to do digital marketing for doctors, like I was networking at work. Like, yeah, I, I still work and I still enjoyed it. But I, the people that I was working with, they knew I had other stuff. I used to give one of the dots I was working with, like, tips on what stocks and stuff. <laughs> on what stocks, and, you know, I was buying and um what investment moves I was making. And some of them be needing as much, you know, help as we do. Because I know a couple of them, like, over $100,000 in debt. Like, so just have more than one stream of income. Um, if you can save your money, start buying you some shares of whatever you use a lot. Like you could buy shares of Walmart, 
and it gives you a dividend. You can buy shares of McDonald's. It gives you dividends. Um, Hasbro. Yep, I have a condo I rent out to travel into. Yeah, that, it's raining. That's how you have to have more than one way to make this money out here. Like surgical tech. Let me say, I do enjoy surgical tech because you it's higher paying. Like it is. Sorry if y'all came my chickens, but surgical tech is a higher paying job. So you can take half your money and live off of it. You can easily live off of $2,500 as a surgical tech and take the other money that you make it and throw it into some shares. Um, right now, Amazon is about uh, $3,200 a share. Um, Sony, well, yes, I, I would say Sony, but right now Sony finna come, or PlayStation 5 just came out. So Sony shares kind of are up right now, but you can still do Sony. Just buy you some shares and stuff and then sit the money in there. And you too, Ariel, even at McDonald's, if you got an extra $20, go buy you some shares or something. And let the, and as long as it's got a dividend return on it, or even if it don't, because Amazon doesn't have a dividend return and some of the other things that I have, stocks I have don't have dividend returns, but they growing at a, a faster rate than what my dividend stocks are. So just think about other ways to invest your money besides just like, you know, Gucci bags. <laughs> I'm 37, so like Gucci bags. I get excited about like watching my Amazon shares or like, you know, I bought some Hasbro, some Sony, some Microsoft, some Facebook, some Google, like buy that stuff. Why did I buy Facebook, Amazon? No, not Amazon. I bought Facebook, Google, yeah, Facebook and Google. And I bought those because everybody, like, my, I'm a, like, I'm into marketing. I'm into digital marketing. So people use it. Facebook ads, which also require, like, also lets you do Amazon, or not Amazon, but Instagram ads. And then Google also run ads. So I'm paying, putting money, investing money into things that I know about. So I know about those things. But I want you guys to start investing your money. Like, don't just be out here spending money. Even if you're traveling, making money. Like, put your money up. I put so much money up. When I went traveling, it actually set me up for this year. Like, that's, and I didn't know it. Like, that was, you know, my Andrew guys and everybody working in my favor to let me, like, I didn't know, but it was like, you need to save some money. And so I saved way more money than I needed. And I thought I was going to spend it on something else, but then, like, the pandemic hit, and I was like, you know, we're not going to these hospitals if I can, if I can avoid it because my son is high risk with his asthma and allergies. So, you have to have more than one stream of income. Now, I have been a surgical tech, and I've been doing this since 2006. So, that's, what, 14 years? So, I'm to the point now where it's time for me to get out of the game. Like, And so, if you in, like, that's why I be telling people, like, get it. Make sure you have an exit plan. So, get in and get out so you don't be, like, miserable and hating um, people and just brood. Because that's what happened. Like, people get burnt out in the medical field. And then they have all this debt and stuff and they can't quit working. So they're just miserable at work. And not everybody, but I'm just saying for like the ones that's like, it's some nurses that have been nurses for 30 some years and they just hate their life. But you know, they won't quit because they can't quit. And that's all they know. So I would just tell, I want, I want everybody that um, can have more than one stream of income to get more than one stream of income. And that's really all I got. If y'all don't have no more questions, Shan, you got me all on like a, a tangent. <laughs> but that was a good question though. But on something like with the renting too, the renting for traveling house, uh, renting your house out for traveling nurses, that's definitely a good um, hustle. I had to pay, I paid $800 a month for a room when I was in the Bay Area because you know, that's how much like they, they rent up there is ridiculous. So I could only really... I could afford more, but to like pocket the rest, I pay eight hundred dollars a month. And then like here in Florida, like I'm renting this house out for a thousand dollars, and it's like huge or whatever. It's not huge, but you know, it's big enough. So, anyways, you guys, that's all I got because I'm still hungry, and now I got to use the bathroom. It's raining. So if you guys, um, if you guys don't have any questions for me, I'm gonna give y'all a few more minutes and see. Shan, don't ask no question, cause you're gonna have me all off. Let me see what y'all got for me. Nothing. I can't believe I've been on here this long. Like, I had no intentions. I was like, I'm going to see how long it's going to take for somebody to come in. And I'm just get on off and just. I thought I was going to answer like four questions to get on. Bye, girl. All right, you guys. I'll see y'all on the next video. I enjoyed you guys. I love you. Enjoy your day. Happy Saturday. Be safe out there. How do I?